wait, did you come back from the future where this is like the favorite show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys have no idea. <laughs> Don't change mind. This show completely changes mankind for the better. <laughs> Future Man is fun for the whole family, except for children, grandmas, people that don't like sci-fi, people that don't like toilet humor. Future Man was hilarious science fiction. Future Man is my favorite pro herpes TV show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody, and welcome to the Bridget Fitzgerald Show. Just kidding. Welcome to Falling Towers. What the watch the first <laughs> episode <laughs> podcast where we watch the first episode of a series and then what we the talk first? about it. I sorry, I'm just not. I'm not used to the guests being funnier than us <laughs> right off the bat. That was pretty good. Uh, so. Today we reviewed, by the way, we're doing this because Falling Tower is now 20 years old. Happy birthday, Falling Tower, 20 year Wee! anniversary. And today we are reviewing the Future Man first episode, which is called Pilot. With us, as always, is Mr. Michael Kenyon Rosenberg. Hey! We are joined by super special guest and uh, actor comedian Bridget Fitzgerald. Hi! Thanks for Fitz having me, guys. Gerald. Fitzgerald, like JFK. Yeah, uh, great, Smiling Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's talk about it, uh, you know. All right. Might as well, right? Yes. Bridget, on a scale of one to 10, what would you give this episode? On a scale of one to 10? Honestly, it had a lot of things that I really love. I'm a big sci-fi nerd. I love Star Trek. I love Star Wars. I'm one of those fans that can go both ways. Um, <laughs> I really uh, love comedy. And the fact that there were so many funny people that I love in this show made me really happy. So I would say that probably like a, a nine. I'd say wow. so. But a lot of my, lot of my boxes got ticked. I was like, yeah. Oh. Also, everybody at home, something we got to mention, if you want us to review something, uh, you want us to watch the first episode of a show, just in the comments below, just say WTF, what's happening? Or WTF, 227, or WTF, amen. You know, whatever you happen to want us to review, because WTF is watch the first. What do you think of it, Michael? I loved it. I mean, Angie and I, my wife, are, we're watching the whole thing. Uh, as right now, we're, we're, uh, we're on season two. There's three seasons out right now, so... Uh, we're we're loving it and like it's every episode is is i would say just as good or better than than this pilot so far and uh just kind of keeping us intrigued all, all the way through and giving us the chucks sorry i'm still laughing at the pro herpes show <laughs> that like completely <laughs> threw me off i couldn't even get through the intro after you said that i just kept laughing and thinking about that uh yeah you know it was better than i expected um, th this was my first time watching it, of course. Right. What did you expect, though? I just didn't expect much because I never really heard of it, or I thought maybe I'd heard of it. And you know, it's a it's a half hour sci fi comedy, so it's like, oh, okay, you know, I just didn't really have many expectations, which put it kind of in the middle of the road. But there were two things immediately that jumped out at me, which was number one the jokes came fast and furious, like very quickly. Um, it, it was very clear what kind of show, you know, this was with the, with the, with the jokes and they, they came, I mean, they weren't all that funny, but they, the jokes were the kind of jokes where they don't take themselves seriously. They're like, yeah, we know it's not that funny, but who cares kind of jokes, you know, like keeping it light. And the other thing I noticed was it had a very clear direction. The characters were defined. It was easy to follow. It was simple. We understood the characters. We understood their motivation. It was, you know, and that's a, that's a perfect pilot, in my opinion. It, it doesn't have to be a world beater as long as the viewer understands what's going on. We get the characters. We know where it's going. We, within the first minute, you know what you're watching. So I, I thought it was really good. Well, kind of. I mean, the first minute is kind of like a misdirect a little bit. It's like, 
you're watching it and it's like uh you're he's like all these cheesy jokes and you're like wait a minute what the heck is this show it's gonna be like some stupid dumb show with like these dumb cheesy jokes like uh, oh yeah oh yeah well that that was the thing that's what i call a hole in one exactly that was when that's what i mean in the first whatever 20 or 30 seconds i he said that line and i immediately was like okay i know what kind of show i'm watching here I'm watching those kind of, kind but of then it takes a turn when you're like, okay, that was just a, his his weird dream that he was having. Oh then, yeah, I, I mean the voice, that. like the the kind of comedy that it was. You know, the yeah, kind okay. of comedy I was like, okay, it's going to be one of those. Anyway, sorry, what were you saying, Bridget? Oh, it's just a frat pack movie as as far as the rest of it goes. Like right. it's frat, and I'm on board for that because I think they're always very funny. And wasn't it Seth Rogen who wrote this pilot? So it's so pretty... this this pilot was was directed by Seth Rogen and Evan oh, Goldberg. Oh, cool. um, but it was written by. Um, yeah, how... he had influence on this one because I was. Oh, like, you could tell for sure. Yeah. His sense of humor, and also to speak to that opening again, like I really loved how car- cartoonish or right. comic it was like the clear shot through the stomach and there's the dude and i really wanted him to say future man when he said future man like <laughs> <laughs> or, i was like that's exactly all i want this is very simple i want some action scenes i mean i will talk about the action scenes later or i i don't know if you want to talk about it now but i have thoughts <laughs> we're, we're pro discussion yeah 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 okay well compare like the action stuff at the beginning of this episode to the action stuff at the end the beginning is like clearly the actual like this guy's a stunt guy like th- this guy knows how to flip this guy does the things and then look at those throws from the family which is done by the actual actors they like jump in the air <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> <laughs> and i was just like Thank God for stuntmen. You know, like that was one of my <laughs> that was different. one of my favorite parts was when the wolf walks in and just starts throwing family members. <laughs> That's when I was like, wow, they're just gonna they're you know. But that is when the comedy did change a little bit for me. Where I'm like, okay, it's not just ch- uh, silly and cheesy, but it's also gonna be slightly dark. Where he's throwing women and children and puppies. He doesn't <laughs> throw, he's throwing them against a wall. Yeah. I've ever seen a mom thrown in a sitcom (laughs) before. I'm like, people, wow, I'm real glad this is on Hulu. I feel like that wouldn't get past this answer. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I also like when they're beating up the bikers, they're like, headshot, headshot, leg shot. (laughs) Yeah. That was gold. That was gold, too. That was one of my favorite parts as well. Because it was like, it's like the video game. And they're like, and you're like, yeah, we should do that when we beat people up. We should narrate. Punch that guy in the dick. Like, (laughs) stab him in the balls. (laughs) Guys, we were all thinking it. They just said it. I know. That was Uh, great. Yeah, it's one of the greatest parts about that that whole thing. It's like, they're, they're like, they're acting like the people that they are in the video game uh, in real life. And, And it's kind of, and they don't give a they don't give a crap. I'll hey, say. watch it. Yeah. I <laughs> yeah. Oh, so it does open up. Let's let's kind of start around the beginning somewhere a little bit. Um, although in this show they don't start at the beginning. They go in the middle. They go in the end. They do all kinds of stuff. 1969. People from the future. Not <laughs> anymore. Um, so yeah, we find out that he's dreaming and his dad calls him Joshy and he turns out to not be a superhero, but we all understand what's going on in the story now. We get it. Okay. And he's just a gamer who broke his joystick again. And then there's the two people at the store, the the game store or whatever, that they're like, oh, oh he just likes to jerk it to Tiger Woman. <laughs> Guys, this this show was stacked with cameos from the beginning. If you're like right. an indie com- which I am a thousand percent, then you probably went like, boom, Aquafina is back there. What's yeah. Aquafina doing in this episode? Paul Shear. Paul Shear. I'm like, Who's if you Paul Shear? Me- Paul Shear was the guy <laughs> at the video game store. Got it. Yeah. Oh, he's hilarious. He's like the main guy in the store. And I think later, uh, Ron Funches shows up as a janitor. And I'm just like, what are you doing here? You are hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> super happy about it. Yeah, I recognized, uh, what's his name? Let me find, Keith David, who played Dr. Elias Cronish, but I didn't know what he was in. 
So I looked uh, him up on IMDb. I'm like, I've seen this guy in so many things, but what? And I looked and his IMDb had like 300 credits. I was like, okay, never mind. I've seen him in a lot of stuff. Right, right. He's around. Yeah. <laughs> Nice, nice. And I love that they took advantage of mean Haley Joel Osment. Like, <laughs> I love it when, like, you realize that he also was in, like, Silicon Valley playing, like, kind of a mean dude there, right. too. So if you're an indie comedy fan, boy, do you love mean Haley Joel Osment. It just, like, <laughs> adds a little something. So you, you guys are going to have to tell Andrew me who Ed that Bakley character. too. I like that very much. But first, what, uh... Who did Haley Joe Osmond uh, play? He was the the the, the dickhead. Uh, yeah, he was the the guy who had to had to to jerk off the possums or something in, in the <laughs> yeah, lab. He, he was the one upset about his stuff getting ruined. Swabbing urethras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was great. You know, I like that very much. The joke, not <laughs> not the action, not the activity. Uh, <laughs> and of that, and they were even clear of themselves. <laughs> No one likes this. No one wants this to be a thing, but I don't know. Maybe it is. Especially not the opossum. The opossum was the least happy of all. Yeah. Yeah, he looked very upset. I'm so sorry. I wish that in his world he had a video game too, then he would be very happy doing his job. Normally this one I'd say, or her, but no, we know it was a boy, a possum. There's no doubt about it. Oh yeah, but Ed Bagley Jr. How cool is that? I oh, had no I idea. I love that dude. Yeah, such a oh, good time. What's her name? Uh, her name is uh, Glenn Hidley. She was she was on. Uh, I was like, where when I, when I saw the mom, I was like, where do I know this lady from? She and like her voice is so familiar. And then I was like, oh yeah, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Uh, oh, if you've seen the movie, really? Like, yeah, yeah. She plays the 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 female lead. I had no idea. Hey. Oh. I like well, to know, I, I think it's fun to see which people we recognized. I like, I recognize Ed Bagley. I recognized uh, the doctor. You guys recognize the comedians. Michael recognizes the dirty, rotten scoundreless. Yeah. And can we take a time out to talk about the star of the show who played PETA in the Hunger Games? I was very oh, happy. Oh, he did. Oh, man. See, and Bridget recognized the Hunger Games. <laughs> I love those. I was the kind of fan that would be there like every time one came out at midnight to see the midnight showing of it. I love the Hunger Games. In fact, that was the reason that I was excited to watch the show because I was like drawn for him. Huh. And I was sci-fi. I didn't know it was going to be funny. I was That's- very pleasant. That's awesome. Yeah, I like two out of three pitas. <laughs> the one you mentioned is not the one. <laughs> what uh, are the other two? The bread and the organization. All right, yeah. Uh, but that's cool. I had no idea. Like, I saw the first Hunger Games, but I didn't recognize the dude. That's really cool. I thought he did fine. Well, I thought he did a great job. Him. Maybe you saw him as a child in Little Manhattan. I did. <laughs> a tiny little boy where he's like falling in love with a little girl and they court each other through Manhattan. It's adorable. Treat yourself. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Ryan, she said treat yourself. I don't, I don't feel like that would be a treat to me. (laughs) I'm a sucker for a rom-com. I'm, I'm very happy with those. And that one's adorable. So then, you know, they talk, they make all these jokes about, Miss Pac-Man and how the guy says like she's chomping on my dick or whatever like chomp 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 and Aquafina's talking about Luigi's furry gonads and stuff and can we talk about the Super Mario that happened in there because did you realize that the hero of the story is too a janitor so in a way like huh. he's like the plumber that's going through his own like game or whatever like he's doing plenty of plumbing during this episode like take cleaning and doing all that sort of stuff. I was like, ooh, what a cool meta thing to have done. And also, <laughs> but also like, whoa, is this what they think that all plumbers do? Like all day long is just play with dwellings and that, that's it. Like <laughs> what, what is up with the plumbing in this workplace? Like they need better toilets or something. I, I felt terrible for him. And Did you work place. as a plumber before or you something? You come from a long line of plumbers. I come from a long line of Super Mario players. Oh, okay. really them. I can't get mm. enough. I'll Super Mario Kart all day. All day. 
That's true. I didn't make the Luigi connection. I wonder <laughs> if he was like wishing that he was Luigi and being like, oh man, I wish Aquafina was chomping on my furry gonads. <laughs> Because that's what they're talking. They're talking about like how it's like their uh, their dream video game sex partner or something like that, right? Well, yeah. Paul Shear was like uh, everybody spanks it to video game characters or something like that. Right? Yeah. Oh, so Michael, this is the question of the hour. Who <laughs> is your uh, sexual video game fantasy? Um, I guess uh, I I, just, I don't know Laura Croft. I guess I don't know. I I haven't uh, probably somebody from World of Warcraft. I I don't really can couldn't really answer uh, correctly. <laughs> Bridget, go ahead. Uh, I I really kind of got this from a a different perspective because I was just like, oh, they're talking about Mario Brothers. Like the sex part of it just kind of was like, Boop. so I was like, oh, that's funny. Ha ha. Uh, but I didn't really think of it in terms of what I would like because I've never really done that. I just play the game to play the game. I'm like, oh yeah, Mario. But I mean, I guess probably if I had to pick one, I would say Mario. <laughs> but get the job done. <laughs> <laughs> he knows about plumbing. He can clean those pipes. <laughs> he, he doesn't give up at one castle. He'll go to all of them. Like I, that's 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 a catch right there. But I do think that maybe they were onto something that maybe a lot of people do that. And tell us in the comments below who your video game sexual fantasy is. Because I bet, I think a lot of people are going to say Laura Croft, like I right. said. Uh, there's probably like I just That, that was just like, a, like the go-to one because that's like the only like really the standout hot female video game figure that I can mm. think of. But what about you, Ryan? Well, there's Metroid. <laughs> um, it's good Met name. all the way metroid sexual um i don't know dig dug i don't know <laughs> maybe dig dug i guess because he I can mean, dig, dig dig down into there huh well okay. back in the days of like four bit and eight bit video games you couldn't really tell if it was a boy or a girl anyway so whatever dig yeah. dug zelda yeah oh i love zelda zelda's the best i've played so many zelda games it's insane and yeah. i love the current one breath of the wild i'm very into it i beat the game already and then i went back and I, now i'm just closing off temples because i like it that much i'm just i'm a ocarina of time guy myself that that was oh. my that was my game back in my that was my big zelda game back in the day so nice nice solid choice michael solid yeah. choice. <laughs> I'm more of a Master of Orion kind of guy. Yeah. Like space and galaxy conquest, like Star Trek nerdy stuff. I'll tell you though, uh, I really like subtle humor a lot of times. A lot of times, it's good that this show mixes it up. Like they do the, the, the poop jokes and stuff. But before the poop joke, they also make these little subtle things that I thought was really funny. Like when uh, the security guard Ray comes in, the guy that gives him the bad news about the pooping and stuff. But when he when he's like, oh, you know, what's up in that bottle? That you sure that's not your own urine in that bottle? He's like, no, it's apple juice. And he says, you love apple juice. It's your, <laughs> it's your third favorite juice. And I don't know why. I was like, that's funny. Yeah, that he knows that because obviously that dude has told him that it's his third favorite ju juice, which means he's actually thought about. That. I don't know. I thought that was cute. I liked it. Oh, I thought that was great. I mean, Ron Funches is there with a with a sweet. He has with just the like punches. The, he. Punches with the punches. Like he, he has just a sweet, lovable persona. If you ever saw him in this, uh, I don't remember what the name of the show was, but he was on TBS. It was like a multi cam. Uh, he was one of the members of this gang, and he was just like really so funny. Like this big group of dudes that were all friends. I think it was called Single or something like that, but it was, it was very funny. He's, he's a great guy in a pinch, for sure. Hmm. That was Ray, the security guard guy? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was yeah. really funny. He also was in, um, oh gosh, what's the one where they're they're all cops and I I think they're, uh, gosh, what's Reno nine one one. No, not Reno nine one one. I want to say they're all like Community Watch or something like that, Neighborhood mm. Watch. There was a movie about that, and he played a cop in that. I think. Hmm. I'm a big fan of his stand up. He's done stand up on a lot of late night shows also, and his stand up is always that kind of like big jovial lovable but it's like the pacing of the delivery mm. 
You can't repeat that. That's the beautiful Ron Bunches. Whoa, she just blew him a kiss. <laughs> How did you even know he was in that direction? Uh, I, I, have, I have a special place in my heart for Ron Bunches. Oh. I always know. We have a connection. <laughs> and then, of course, he does drop the bomb about having to clean up the poops or whatever. I don't remember exactly <laughs> how he said it, but it was funny because it's it, not your fault. Well, actually one of them was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great line. I love that. It was great. What was your favorite line of the entire episode, Bridget? My favorite line? Mm, that's tough. Cause I did, I left a lot during this episode. Um, I, I really would have to watch it again. Like nothing's like springing out to mind uh, about it. Just the whole thing that it, it, the crux is on herpes at the end of the episode. Just <laughs> that they're like there to make sure herpes stays around. or to But it, like, but it works too. What, what was cool about it. Yeah. What was cool about it was that that actually worked that you're like, okay, that makes sense. Like it all ties together. And, it's feasible. It wasn't just like a, as just a joke, but it was like a joke that you're like, okay, that, that tracks. It can, it can work. It's weirdly timely now that we're all in like lockdown for a disease <laughs> to hear that <laughs> where we all die from some disease cure. I'm like, whoa, is it way too soon to be watching this? <laughs> like, Where's Elias Cronish when we need him? Is some guy coming back for us? What, is this our test? I don't know. <laughs> Michael, did you have a uh, favorite line? Yeah, I, I had a chance to think of it while Bridget was squirming. She bought us time. Oh, oh good. I bought <laughs> Edge Strange. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, I was just thinking back. Uh, uh, probably one of my, my favorite scenes was uh, where they're in, in Cantor's Deli, and, and then uh, Wolf is, like, chowing down on the pickles. It's like, oh, these little green logs are delicious. <laughs> That the look crazy. on his face before he even said anything was priceless. Like, he, you know, he takes a bite. He's just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, life. This is life right yeah, here. Yeah. And, and everybody that likes pickles is like, dude, I know. I yeah. know how you feel, man. Yes. I wish I could go back and taste pickles for the first time. And just the way he got to Green Logs. Yeah. Also, can I just say that kind of like blew me out of it for a minute? Because okay, I love pickles, okay. but also it shows a lot about thank God. But also, it shows a lot about their priorities. Because in the future, they're living like rats, essentially, like in this sewer world, right? But they keep around video games <laughs> because that's some sort of weird test thing for them. So I'm like, where are your priorities? If mm. like video games is like way up there. But like food and basic necessities, like they don't worry about that. Like that that was the part where I was just like, what's going on? And then I was like prioritizing pickles above a video game. I'm like, I dig it, I'm on board. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You gotta love say, a good deli pickle. I mean, like those those pickles, like, especially the the new pickles that they have, like the ones that are like they're not as sour as like the, the fully sour. Oh, for pieces. sure. And they went to Cantor's. That's like right. one of the famous delis to see it like transformed into the sixties. That was also really fun about this show. Right. Is that if you've ever been to Hollywood or West Hollywood, you saw whiskey a go, go and that whole crossroads dressed up to look like the sixties where the doors right. are. You get to see all these sixties cars. Like that was really fun for me. Like, as someone who lives in LA to be like, whoa, that's cool. That's fun. That's fun time. Everybody likes yeah, to dress up. Couldn't help but think like, how long did it take them? How hard was it to like transform everything back into 69? And to, there it is. Mike's got it. Um, and okay. to kind of, uh, to, you know, to take us back and to control all the traffic and do all that. I mean, it's quite an undertaking, especially to do that in LA, in Hollywood, it's, you know. Um, I did want to share a couple lines that I thought were really good. Oh, when uh, when Tiger and Wolf first come back to see the dude, whatever his name, Peta, uh, Joshi, and he's like mad, and Tiger says, "Relax, it's just a little bit of cum," and he says, 
it's a lot of cum. <laughs> I don't know why. It was so funny. But it was, and I think maybe the other one was when they were saying, like, when they were fighting the bikers, and they're like, crush his nuts, break their skulls. You know, they're doing, those were pretty. pretty I got to get my skull lines. trophy. Yeah, those were pretty solid. Oh, and when Tiger first gets hit from the gum, the first thing he says is, oh, I'm hit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that killed me. <laughs> that whole scene, just, uh, I, we were, both my wife and I, we were dying laughing. Like, he's like, he's just, he's trying to get off and like, these, these two people show up and like, he's like, oh, what? And then all over, <laughs> wolf. Yeah. Oh, that, also, that scene kind of like, I I guess, I don't know why in my mind I'm like the, the check it again police or something. Cause I'm just like, wait a second. He runs downstairs because he thinks his mom and dad are still eating dinner. So did he like leave in the middle of dinner to like go play a video game while his mom and dad are still eating? Like what's, what's his story? Like he like runs back down. He's like, oh, it's four hours later after I played this video game. They must still be at the table. I'm like, what? I thought that was also great when he comes down, when he comes down and he sees the, 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 the note that they left and he says, went, went to get groceries or something like that. And then the mom says, and an adventure. And exploring. <laughs> or exploring. <laughs> that was, that was brilliant. I thought, I thought that was really smart. You know, uh, that know. was great. But I also love how many advantages the show takes from like cues from back to the future, like setting up the old house, even a little musical thrilling when they go see like the, the mom of the past, like the grandma or whatever, who he tries to address as Joshi, like all of this, it's like, it feels like they took so much from Back to the Future and then played with it and Googled it up. Right, I'm glad you brought that up. I yeah. just want to say really quickly, because part of the thing that told me that this was good comedy that's not going to take itself too seriously and is very aware is because when I first started watching this, I was like, dude, this is totally... The Last Starfighter, which I think is one of right. the best sci-fi movies of all time, by the way. The Last Starfighter. I'm like, dude, this is Last Starfighter. And that was kind of like a thumbs down for me. But then they acknowledge it. The dude's like, that's just Last Starfighter. And I was like, thank you, PETA. Right, <laughs> yeah. Last Starfighter, I mean, yeah, there's there's definitely a reference to... Uh, and Quantum Leap. He says that. Quantum Leap, so, yeah. So it's The Last Starfighter meets Quantum Leap. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> he's talking our language, man. Yeah. And also, I think the language that got this show picked up, it's The Last Starfighter meets Quantum Leap. Please produce this show. Right. Yes. A little bit of Back to the Future, time travel, or the Terminator. Like, it's kind of got a little bit of all that kind of stuff. Oh, for sure. I wish that video games were some, like, thing where you get rewarded with time travel. I would play them constantly. I already <laughs> play for Cooked all the time. Like, to know that at the end of it, I could go back in time. I'd be on there 24 seven. But here's my question though. What year would you want to go back to or forward to? I would go forward. I want to see where things end up. I'm like, spoiler alert, let's go. <laughs> let's find out what happened to me. Let's find out what happened to my family. Let's, see. let's do the Back to the Future 2 thing, which is controversially my favorite of the Back to the Future trilogy. <laughs> I love two. Uh, I would get like the almanac and then come back with it. Like, I think that that's like the key, the key to that one. But then you're changing the future. If you go back with the almanac, then, then your future is going to be different than what you saw. And not only that, you might find out how you died and then that might change your future also. How did that hurt Michael J. Fox? He had like this cool <laughs> giant truck. Like he ended up having like this great life. Like, I feel like, like that's fine. I, I feel like the reward outweigh the, the problems with that. You know, uh, that's a great question, Michael Kenyon Rosenberg. What's your uh, answer to it? Well, my initial thought, it would be the same reaction he had, which is, can we go see some fucking dinosaurs? But beyond that, look, the past is less intriguing to me for a multitude of reasons. One being that we kind of know what happened in the past for the most part mostly we we generally understand right but the future i'm a i'm a curious guy so i want to see what's going on in the future i want to see and i'm talking like not 10 or 15 years i'm saying i want to go like 200 or 300 years i want to see star trek 
I want to see aliens and space travel or an empty planet. Who knows? <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> but you, you never know. It could be an empty planet with cockroaches everywhere. I don't know, but I'm, I'm a curious guy and I want to see that. It could be the dystopian future with the biotics. The but biotic wouldn't it be cool if you could actually go forward and see like that we had invented, like, cause remember that uh, when fans used to see uh, uh, Nimoy with his flip phone, they would, they would say, oh my God, it's like it, it came real or something like that. Wouldn't it be cool to go forward and see um, some of those things that we've dreamed about actually happening? Like, I would love that if you could actually beam yourself somewhere, my mind would be blown. I would be doing that all the time. I'd be pretty nervous. <laughs> I'd be pretty nervous, but I would eventually do it. I'd be like, okay, let's watch other people doing it first. But what if you could go back in time and kill Hitler? I'm going to uh, let Bridget handle that one. If I could go back in time and kill Hitler, I think I would. I think any, anybody would, like, to prevent a massacre of people. Like, why would you not? That sounds very selfish to be like, no, I wouldn't try. I don't know. What if you could just get baby Hitler and just put him in a different home and then, and then you don't have to kill anybody and maybe he just gets raised differently and everything's fine. Just Hitler the artist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hitler, Hitler the painter. I don't Can know. you imagine? I mean, that's a real open-ended question right there. That's a real open-world video game that you just, <laughs> you just started. Patent pending. <laughs> uh, Michael, what, what uh, exact year would you want to time travel to, and would you kill Hitler? Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good question. You're I not think... immune to these. You no, have to... I know. I'm, yeah, I'm grateful that I get to answer a question as well from from that I asked that I forgot to think about an answer to. So now I get to stretch and stall for time while I'm thinking of an answer. And I just Great. get to filibuster and keep talking <laughs> until I think of what I'm going to say. What was I think, I think that would kill Hitler. Yeah, probably. What year would you like to uh, travel to? I think I would go back to uh, one. Year go back, one? Go back to year one. All right. Yeah, that way I can like go back and like uh, see like what, uh, what, uh, what, what, uh, what, what, what's going on? Yeah, what, what's, what's really going on? That would be fun. See, Todd Although, if I, oh, you know, it'd be, I just thought of something even better. I could go back to like the late 1400s and see a Shakespeare play live. Mm -hmm. but then what, if, what if it wasn't just, wasn't nearly as good as we, think? I mean, we glorify it and we romanticize it. What if you're just kind of like, oh, this was okay, I guess. No, I mean, I've read the plays. They're good. So it's good, it's good <laughs> I mean, stuff. like the production. What if the actors were terrible? What if it was in some rickety barn? Well, it was kind of a rickety barn in the Globe Theater. And, and, it and did. It caught on fire. It's, it's very barny. <laughs> like, people, <laughs> people stood there. It was standing room only all the time in the front. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it probably smelled <laughs> like uh, manure and stuff. And Yeah, there's certain things about modern culture that I wouldn't want to travel back in time and then get stuck there accidentally. Like, I love air conditioning. It's 90 today in uh, LA. I'm like, if I lived in a time without air conditioning or indoor plumbing, I would be a very sad smiley bridge. I don't, I don't know. That I would... <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to stay there, but definitely like Fun get in and get out. Yeah. Fun to visit, not to stay. There was a question I had about the uh, uh, wardrobe too. And we, you know, maybe we could touch on it. Maybe we don't have to. Why Tiger, the lady named Tiger, why did she have tiny little pockets of cleavage just like right there? Like these weird little mesh, just like a tiny little, like, I mean, at this point, if everything is completely covered head to toe, why, why just have two little breathing openings? I don't know. It, so it looks like lingerie. That's what lingerie looks like. So they're like, hey, by the way, she's a lady. You know, like. <laughs> In case you forgot, she's a lady. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Michael, what'd you think of it? Oh yeah, she's supposed to be um, uh, kind of a sexy video game character, right? Like that's mm -hmm. in the video game, that's how they made her. But yeah, for you do make a good point that in in modern or not modern, but future everyday wear as a as a, a person rebelling against the biotics, uh, it's not really the most uh, uh, protective uh, gear. Yeah. It yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think of the right word for it, but it wasn't uh, very functional when you've got right. like this obviously protective kind of clothing, you know, leather or armor or whatever it was. And then she just has something for the girls to breathe, you know, whatever. So somebody can just go, oh, that must be right around where her heart is. Perfect. Easy. Great. Well, just have her right there. Unless they emit laser beams, there's no reason for those pods. <laughs> that would be an awesome power, yeah. I mean, awesome power from Austin Powers. Um, but that's yeah, sharks. We'll write that episode. <laughs> but if you ever look at like uh, World of Warcraft, you'll notice like the women, like their armor is like uh, like a like a bra, but then it's got like the same amount of armor as like a full plate gear or something like that. It's like uh, it's pretty ridiculous. For those of you that play World of Warcraft. Yeah, you, you go. <laughs> I mean, I think they even make a joke about how sexualized women are in video games in the, the Disney movie Onward, the Pixar movie. Like mm. he, at first, like looking at a very sexual um, uh, girl in his, his video game. Uh, so I think that like, it's, it's very obvious that little boys like, like video games for a different reason than I do sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, I'm here for the adventure. They're like, I'm not. <laughs> So, uh, also, we want to spend a little bit of time talking about you, Miss Bridget Fitzgerald, oh, because you. you have so many, not just interesting things to say, but you have done a lot of interesting things. How's that for a segue? Hey, hey. nice. Now, <laughs> so, you, you're, you star in this thing called, uh, was it Smiley Bridge TV, obviously named after you because your name is Bridget and you're Smiley. Can you yep. tell us a bit about that? Sure. Smiley Bridge TV is a web series uh, that I made. Um, it was actually a finalist for an, uh, a $5,000 uh, prize for Ovation TV. Mm -hmm. uh, it was one of 30 projects that were chosen. Uh, it didn't get the prize, but then it, I raised enough money thanks to that and Rocket Hub to make this series thanks to donations from all over the country. Um, so yeah, I, I wanted to put something out there that was just uh, funny and upbeat. Uh, and I thought that there were too often gross things that I didn't think uh, were necessarily necessary to be funny. And I wanted to put something that's just light and happy and smart out in the world. And so that's what I did. Um, I named it Smiley Bridge, but like you said, uh, because uh, my name is Bridget, and my nickname as a kid that my neighbor, Mr. Bill, gave me was Smiley. So as a kid, I was called Smiley. So Smiley Bridge TV made sense to me. I've written a lot of um, sketch comedy for everybody, <laughs> tons of clients, including uh, National Lampoon. I was on their podcast. Wow, back. cool. Half a million monthly listeners. So if, you, if you've heard my voice before, it's because it was on the radio and uh, on their podcast. Um, so I... I just wanted to use the ones that I had made uh, to go out there. I raised funding for, I think, uh, eight episodes. I ended up making 12 because wow. I really wanted to give something great to the people. At the time, I was um, a featured comic on this um, website called VidMe. It's the video back end of Reddit. So I had, I was paid to just make jokes on people's videos, make people laugh. And then also I got... 260,000 views on my videos. And a lot right, of them wow. watched uh, um, both that web series, Smiley Bridge TV, as well as my previous web series where I just act and wrote in it. And that one was called um, Watch the Advent. So. Uh, Vid.me, right? V-I-D dot M-E. Yeah, it's not there anymore. It's oh, the nuts. It's shuttered. But that's why I ported all the videos over before it closed to my YouTube. So if you want to see any Smiley Bridge TV or the admin, you can go click at youtube.com slash Smiley Bridge. That's where all my videos are right now. Smiley Bridge. We'll also link all that stuff in the description box below. 
um, but it's bridge, like a regular bridge, B-R-I-D-G-E, right? Smiley Bridge. Um, that's really cool. So how did you start writing for uh, National Lampoon? Well, um, I've been doing improv for many years and I made a lot of buddies. I used to do it in New York and then I uh, did improv uh, again when I moved out here to LA. Um, and so I just talked to a couple of my buddies and they were like, hey, we're doing this thing. Do you want to come on board? And so I said, sure. You know, I, I at the time was in the middle of Hollywood. So I just would walk down the street once a week uh, with new material. And then we would just get in a room. We would do a read through of it. And then we would assign people parts and then just do it. It was a great way to like just keep making and keep producing. And I always like um, I love making people laugh. Uh, that was the reason why I created um, my sitcom Musy that was on Time Warner. Uh, it's because I love to make people laugh. I love to act, so I make pieces for myself, but I also love making people laugh. That's from a long, many years of like doing stand up and doing improv. So it kind of gave me an uh, opportunity to do that. So that's why I ended up doing that. Is that sitcom Musy uh, findable anywhere? <laughs> I mean, is it not anymore because wow. it was WTF on... Musy? I know, right? Well, I <laughs> I'm a on this as well as the writer and the star of it, a uh, co-writer and the star of it. So, um, so I had to partner with another production company to get the production insurance to put it up there. So they currently have the rights to to where Musy is seen. So that's why I can't put it on. Um, uh, YouTube, even though I would love to, or Vimeo, so that people can see it. But um, you can see the trailer for Musy. That's on my YouTube as well. Great. So. YouTube.com slash Smiley Bridge. Yeah. I always keep writing, and I keep uh, working on new stuff. Like I last year, uh, towards the end of the year, I was a finalist uh, for Hoo Ha Ha, which is Elizabeth Banks's website, uh, to actually produce another sitcom pilot that I'd written uh, that I would, would have wanted to star in as well. So uh, mm. I never stopped moving and I never stopped trying. And, you know, one of these days, all the pieces are going to line up. Yeah, well, you succeeded in, in ruining the podcast by making me laugh at the very, from the first get go. So <laughs> you're doing you're doing well. Good. That's my goal. That's my goal in life. You only have who knows how much time you have with other people. So why not make their lives better? Right. Michael, uh, what do you think of Bridget Fitzgerald as the lead in a romantic comedy feature? I would watch it, yeah, for sure. That's my dream. Ryan, to be watched. That. Yeah, well, my absolute. Would you want to write it yourself? Have you written one for yourself? Uh, I actually just finished up on writing a screenplay for an action comedy, and I do have several ideas and parts finished scripts for romantic comedies starring myself, but I'm not going to be limited by that. I'll keep making material for me, but I also audition like a fiend and I've done several feature films. So if I happen to be, be the lead of another person's thing, I also love breathing life in the characters. So here's, here's my, way, here's my question though. Uh, who is your ideal romantic lead opposite you in a romantic comedy? I think I can guess. Okay, go for it. Ryan Reynolds. That, Ryan I'll take that, Reynolds? I'll take that pause That's... as a no. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, I honestly, I think he's hilarious and really smart and funny and sweet. And I, it's really hard to guess who would be my dream person. I liked that guy from, um, oh, gosh, I'm not going to get this right because I'm terrible with names. The guy who eats the giant bull of cereal when he gets dumped in Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Who's the lead of Forgetting Sarah? Jason. Jason Siegel. Jason Siegel. I think that he would be hilarious because he's tall and I'm a tall girl too. Um, Peta, Peta's so, not tall. It, honestly, Peta is not tall. If I was the lead of a rom-com with Peta, it would definitely, that would be the comedy of it. So yeah. there you go. He'd comedy be funny check. though. Yeah. I think he'd be great in a romantic comedy based on what I saw here, but yeah, it would definitely be a size difference. Oh, for sure. I'm a tall lady. That's how I ended up modeling. Too big for your shoes. I don't know, just come, come up with dumb ideas. Ooh. 
<laughs> Boo. Anybody got any tomatoes? Someone um, give me a ladder. I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. That's like uh, in Rocky when he goes, well, the first thing I'm going to need is a ladder. That one. <laughs> That's a really good impression. I'm Aww. like, you should just stop it. You should hear his <laughs> wharf. <laughs> you should hear my wharf. That's right. Do it. Uh, for Star Trek fans out there, what does he say? I don't know. Goes, yes, Captain. I don't know. Oh, Cringes, a warrior's yeah. drink. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, I'm kind of full of allergies right now, so probably wouldn't do it justice. But just imagine I did a really good wharf impression. Oh. Too late. I've already happened in my head. My brain gerbils. It's already happening. <laughs> so, uh, well, that's really cool. We'll put all your... Uh, information in the description box below at least the information that you want shared and uh beyond that let's uh close out this podcast would you bridget i feel like there's an audio issue are you guys hearing that there you go um can you hear me better now uh, yes same same okay um so bridget would you watch the second episode absolutely i am on board now that i know that it's funny as well as sci-fi i'm there i'm there i do feel a bit teased because now i like cheated i looked at the imdb and i'm like wait aquafina and ron funches aren't there anymore hold on you guys you got me you lured me in <laughs> but i'll still watch because i still think it's funny <laughs> Michael, would you watch the second episode? Yeah, I probably would watch it again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Eagerly or, I mean, you know. Yeah, cares. no, I, I, I'm really enjoying this show. I mean, like I said, we're in season two. And uh, yeah, we're, it, there, it keeps up the, the intrigue with a lot of twists and turns. And the comedy's there the whole way, so. I am surprised, but I would watch the second episode as well. I would totally watch it. Um, I may even actually watch it. Not just would, but I may right. actually watch the second episode. I mean, so I thought you enough. might. I thought you might. I didn't think so. I, I was like, eh, what, what am I going to watch? Another show? Who cares? I don't, I don't care. <laughs> That's good enough. It was funny. It made me laugh. I, I give it like a, I give it like a seven. But as wow. far as far That's as That's good for him. As far uh, as setting, as far as accomplishing what they set out to accomplish, I think it's like a nine. I think yeah. they definitely had their voice from the very beginning and it was very clear what was going on. Yep. I like it. What do you give it, scale of one to 10, Michael? A 9.5. What? Uh, what? Amazing. Wait, did you come back from the future where this is like the favorite show? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you guys have no idea. <laughs> Don't change my mind. This show completely changes mankind for the better. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I like that little sketch between the two of you. Is can we see like a second? Can we see before we go a, a scene like the ninth scene where they find out that although it does change mankind for the better there are going to have to be some sacrifices. Oh. Oh, you guys, I got some bad news. Oh no, what happened? So this show does change mankind for the better, but there will be some sacrifices. Oh no, my shirts all have holes in them now. No! That's, that's right. Wait, all wait. shirts are going to be, all women's shirts are going to have holes cut for nipple lasers it's already happening oh it's no happening. oh no ah! Ah! so maybe i was wrong yeah um, that was pretty funny anyway <laughs> i just like watching your wheels move <laughs> you guys are like are you gonna start am i what's gonna happen yeah, here that's fun are you i don't know i'm looking for you <laughs> That was funny. Anyway, that's about all the time we have uh, this week. But 
Bridget Fitzgerald, thank you so much for joining us. You were awesome from beginning to end. Well, from beginning to almost the very end. Oh man, I got up my end game. Man. No, you were great. That was hilarious. Thank you. You are wonderful as well. Well, thank you both for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. Thanks. Yeah, well, I have to go somewhere from my my weird futuristic gray room here. <laughs> <laughs> so check out Bridget online. You're already on YouTube, basically. So just go to, <laughs> you know, youtube.com slash smiley bridge it was. And we'll have all the information in the description box below. If you want us to review a any kind of series you want it could be a terrible one it could be a great one it could be an old one or a new one it could be one in the future we will find it we'll also give us a link as to where we can find it yeah so please makes it easier on us and like and comment and subscribe also please right so just in the comments below say wtf what's happening now or wtf good times or wtf fat albert whatever you want us to see uh tell us that and yes subscribe and hit that bell icon mike likes to say he likes to say smash that bell smash it smash. I, never, I, ne I never say that bell smash okay so ryan what did you think of this podcast oh yeah good reminder thank you um this podcast was almost at the level of hilarity as the show we just watched hmm. This podcast saved all of humanity, but there were some sacrifices. <laughs> uh. This podcast was my favorite pro herpes podcast. <laughs> 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 all right, cool. Uh, we're going to like, well, we're, in the edit, we're going to like change what Bridget says. She can say this podcast will be like, subscribe to Falling Tower. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, perfect, perfect. Good, good memory, Michael. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks very much. And we'll see you all next time on Falling Towers 20th anniversary. Watch the first podcast. Mm -hmm.